Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Mini Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out something very strange and different. Bird Snapper is our game for the day and this is by developer Tom Vanden Bugart and my apologies if I mispronounced your name at all. Uh, this is a first person exploration uh, experience I think we're going to lean on uh, or at least lean in the direction of. This is one of those things that sort of defies genre expectations or categorization or really any general description. We're just sort of exploring in an ambience, in an, uh, in an environment, taking in the sights and sounds and seeing what there is to see. There's not necessarily a win condition as far as I'm aware, but there is some stuff going on here that we should be aware of, and it's certainly quite unsettling. So we seem to find ourselves in the middle of the desert, in what seems to remind me a little bit of another indie game that I've played called Tandor, only minus the uh, shotguns and murder. Uh, in this case, all we are presented with is a lone bicycle, which we can then ride. And you'll see it's getting to be quite late at night, and all of the lights have been turned off with the exception of the moon which seemed to have been directly to my left, however I chose to go completely in the opposite direction. Uh, so all of the plants seem to have little LED lights mounted on them to give us sort of a glimmering path to head on, uh, but we can head wherever we want, there's no reason we have to go toward the moon, it's just, you know, something to kind of make a focal point out of. And I can also uh, ring my bike bell if I want by pressing left click here. The other option I have is I can actually get off of my bike and walk away from it, which uh, is sort of the interesting element of what's being presented here, right? So there's not really any characters, there's not really anything to see specifically, uh, but you do have this character interaction with the bike, which sort of ends up taking precedence as the most important item you have, because it's the only item you have is the only thing you have to get you through this desert that you don't know if it will ever end. And you can just keep going in any one direction, and as far as I'm aware, you don't ever reach any sort of anything. It just keeps going on ad infinitum which just reinforces the desolation of the situation around you, and you start to wonder, well, why are there so many structures everywhere? Why are there all these, you know, telephone pole-looking things, and electrical towers, and off in the distance? It almost looks like there's a mountainous horizon thing going on, and maybe, like, some very distant lights that are happening, but it just doesn't seem like that ever pans out. And then after a little bit more inspection, you might notice a little bit of a dark fleck in the sky, and then maybe take a little time to inspect exactly what that is. And at first when I saw one of these things, I was thinking, what if this is just some sort of errant bit of, you know, asset information? This is supposed to be like a signboard or something that was supposed to be sitting on the ground. Uh, but as you can see, that is clearly not the case. It is actually hovering. Uh, and it is hovering sort of eerily in place without really making any sound. And then you start to wonder, well, what if the reason that all of these very dark and sort of creepy sounds are happening is because you're actually being watched by all of these things that are hovering in the sky because there's actually a whole bunch of them in every direction as far as you can see. So it sort of brings a whole new element to what was a moment ago a rather benign exploration experience. You know, I started this up, I was thinking, well, maybe this is just sort of like a Proteus in a wasteland or something, although I believe there's actually like a Proteus mob that does something like that as well. Uh, and then I was thinking, well, maybe this is like Dark World Proteus meets Fallout 3 Wasteland plus Bicycle, uh, and then more Ambience. And that's sort of where I was lying until I found those UFO-looking things, and also started to question what's up with these, uh, what I thought to be telephone poles, start to look like antennas a little bit, and all of a sudden, you know, this whole rather boring Americana presentation starts to turn into something a little bit more sci-fi, and uh, definitely a little bit creepy. And the fact that we just keep going through night and nothing seems to be changing, well, I don't know if that was necessarily because the developer wanted to uh, add more and just didn't get a chance to, or if it was because we just wanted to reinforce the sense of just infinite sorrow in all directions. And I really want to know what's up with these guys. I thought maybe I could, like... Oh, did that just move? Did I... Oh, I probably found my way around the, uh, the sprite, so I'm seeing it from the side. So they're actually, like, rectangular boxes floating in the sky. So I thought maybe if I, like, ring my bike bell at them for a while, they would, like, come down and visit me or something. It doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, I really want to know more. This is definitely one of those situations where the game is extremely mysterious and en enigmatic, and I really just want to learn uh, what there is to learn about. I mean, like, that's clearly an antenna. It looks like a TV receiver, and then whatever this thing is just looks rather alien. I don't even think that looks like a human structure. I mean, that looks like a human structure. That kind of looks like a hybridization of a human structure. 
that over there, that electrical tower is like definitely a human structure, and there's actually like a proper telephone pole. And then like, what's up with the plants? Why do they all have lights on them? I don't know. Just makes me wonder a lot of things. I actually really like experiences like this. They make you question, you know, the boundaries of what is and is not a game, where uh, performance art and game interactions meet. All of those types of things are things that I, I think about very regularly, and I consider when I'm looking for games to cover on indie impressions. And at face value, this is a very simple experience. There's not much of anything really to talk about, but it's once you start to really dig in a little bit deeper that you realize, well, this actually has some promise, just if only because it created so much interest in the ambience and so much just curiosity, I think, which is a thing that I think often gets overlooked. You know, without curiosity, you're not going to have a lot of compulsion to want to explore, right? So you've got to have something to drive the player on, whether that be... Uh, you know, exploration for exploration's sake, leveling systems, the desire to find more loot, the desire to get to the end of the game, to get a high score, so on and so forth. You get the idea, but it's just a, it's a cool premise, and I also really like the fine details, the fact that it does actually go through a day-night cycle. There's little particles in the air, there is this sort of looming horizon line, and possibly some birds off in the distance, and then you just have this strange dependence on a bicycle. It's such a benign object, but in this particular case, it's actually extremely important, you know, to your player, because without it, I walk away, I leave it, I don't think I will probably ever find it again, because as far as I know, this is a procedurally generated uh, endless desert. I guess that would be kind of a good test, right? To walk away from the bike and see if when I go back in that direction, if it's still there, or if it gets absorbed into a chunk that then gets deloaded from RAM, and then maybe you'll never see it again. Who knows? Maybe the test is to walk away from the bike to part with your uh, your partner in crime in this specific case. Uh, it hasn't been deloaded yet, but it is actually kind of giving me a good uh, sight on this tremendous draw distance. Because, yeah, I can still see it pretty clearly all the way from this far away. Thankfully your character doesn't run out of stamina or need water or anything like this, otherwise you probably would have been dead a long while ago. It's too bad that there's not more features to see along the landscape. I would have loved to run into a little bit more in terms of, you know, maybe a road every now and then. Although I guess you'd follow the road and realize that it would end up not going anywhere. Well, I guess that could be its own reward in a way. Or perhaps some random garbage strewn about in the desert or some tumbleweeds that roll by. I'm sure there's plenty of other things that could have been implemented uh, if the developer wanted to take this concept even further. But as it is, it's just a kind of a cool little experiment, and I appreciate it even though... Uh, it may not be something that can come to an end or a conclusion in any meaningful way. I still value it just for what it is at face value. So anyway, that's going to be another day's worth of Indie Impressions. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you did, consider leaving a like on it. It does help me out a whole bunch so we can continue to spread the word about more creative and experimental, unique, artistic indie games. And now we're up well over the, I think we're over 820 episodes and counting. It might be 20, it might be close to 20 uh, on the 800 front. But yeah, just uh, continue to leave your support if you think I deserve it. And of course, be sure to come back again tomorrow. New episodes of Indie Impressions go up every single day. So I hope to see you back for another one then. And of course, uh, if you want to go try this out yourself, there will be a link for it in the description. I believe you can either play it as a browser game or you can just download it as well. I recommend that you download it so you can set the resolution. Uh, there, there was a thing where, like, I was trying to play it in the browser and the mouse kept kind of unsyncing with the window, which can be a little bit distracting. Uh, but yeah, anyway, the other reason I wanted to let this run a little while is just to make sure that if I didn't stick with this for... or if I did stick with this long enough that something different doesn't eventually happen. Uh, I could also see, man, it would be really creepy if over each day more and more of those UFOs start showing up in the sky, and then by, like, the fifth or sixth day they're just, like, everywhere you look. That would actually be a pretty interesting narrative, even as simple as that is. I would still kind of appreciate something like that. But anyway, that's it for another day. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and I will catch you all tomorrow.